good? Volume's good, all right. So as he said, uh, my name is Tyler Bennett. Uh, I am one of the main Arkansas developers. Um, been doing this for about a year and a half so far. Uh, we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Um, let's see. So, why, you know, what is Arch Linux? Does anybody know? Does anybody actually use it here? All right. You guys plan on adding the repos when you get home or right now? All right. Um, so we use Arch Linux because we find that it's a lot more lightweight than say Debian or Kali or uh, Fedora, any of those. Um, we find that a lot of users have a lot of, um, more, they have more issues with it because most users are used to being handholded by Debian. And that's obviously an opinion, but that's my opinion to have. Um, so we find that a lot of people enjoy uh, Enjoy Arch because it's lightweight, it's fast, you can install exactly what you need and nothing more. Um, so we are a layer on top of Arch Linux and Arch Linux ARM. Um, we support uh, x i686, x x uh, x86, 64, and ARMv6 and ARMv7. So all of the ARMv6 and ARMv7 boards Arch Linux ARM supports, you can easily drop our layer on top of it and install whatever you would like from the repository. Um, we work very closely with the Arch Linux ARM and Arch Linux developers to try to maintain a very uh, stable and um, try to form a symbiotic relationship between the two so that you can easily just drop our repository on top of them and grab any tools you need being built to the standards of Arch Linux and Arch Linux ARM because they follow Arch Linux. Um, that being said, we, we follow their standards. So you know, we don't have an installer because we use Packstrap. We do that because we believe that we want to keep it simple, stupid, you know, follow KISS philosophy. Um, yeah. So what is this? Oh, that was kind of funny, everyone, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. I like to define us as a fully customizable Arch Linux distro for security professionals on the bleeding edge. So, I got nothing on that one. So we're fully customizable. You know, we don't have you, we don't give you, we don't give you GNOME and say, okay, here's GNOME, that's all you need to use. We let you put whatever you want on there give you all the tools you need to do what you need to do. And obviously we built Arch Linux standards, which means that we follow their philosophy very closely. We package all of our package directly to their, their philosophy and their guidelines. So that means that, uh, for example, if you try to install a package, you can easily move that package without having to worry about it messing up your system because it's packaged correctly. Obviously, as I said, we support 32-bit, 64-bit, and RMB6 and RMB7. So that means we support drones. So one of my other developers is a big drone fanatic. He's actually been building uh, drones for probably 15 years now, a very long time. And he started taking our distribution and dropping it onto uh, embedded devices such as a Odroid C1 or a uh, BeagleBone, BeagleBone Black and attaching in adapters of antennas, you know, USB, Uber Tooth, all that kind of stuff. Scripting everything out and then flying it around and capturing all the information he needs. And then flying away and all using a, um, using a, uh, an autopilot to be able to have it fly in and fly out. So he can fly in, grab what he needs, fly away before anyone knows. So the idea behind that is so you would uh, you know, build a drone that would say go target an office building, goes and flies on top of the office building and lands, being all battery powered and solar powered, lands, sits down, 
does everything it's due, starts scanning, grabs what it needs, flies away. They never even knew you came by. Unless they checked the top of the building. So, yeah. So, how do we do this? Well, <laughs> we do everything via Git. Uh, we have multiple Git repos. We're on GitHub, we're on Bitbucket, and we're on GitLab. We've had to move things around a few times because we, we like to keep our Git repos uh, private, especially our development repo, mainly because if someone's gonna just copy us, then why are we doing this? So we try to keep things back a little bit so someone can't just pull everything in. Um, let's see. So we utilize NAMCAP. NAMCAP is a Arch Linux tool they wrote to make sure that each package build is built to a certain, to the standards that they, they abide to. So, um, for example, a, a C-based program that we compile, if we forget a library, when we NAMCAP that tarball that it builds, it's going to show that we're missing, you know, uh, I don't know, libISL. And we just add it in, recompile it, bam, everything's done. But that makes sure that we maintain their standards directly. So clean truths. So the Arch Linux standards maintain that each package is built in a clean truth environment, which means that basically install all of base, which is all of your, your development libraries, GCC, make, patch, all of that. And then your package build is gonna have to pull in all the dependencies it needs. So if the package build doesn't build correctly in a clean root, we don't push the package. Because that ensures that the package is not correct and needs to be fixed. Oh. <clears throat> Obviously following standards again. So why do we do this? Why not? Um, we do this because we can. We, we enjoy Irish Linux, we enjoy InfoSec, and we enjoy breaking things and hacking things. Um, if nobody used this, we would still do this just for our own ends. Because we really love what we do. We're very passionate about it. Um, so I-686, why do we support I-686? Well, we, again, we try to follow Arch Linux standards and Arch Linux still supports it, so do we. If they drop it out, we'll drop it out. Mainly we'll lose a lot of packages that way, but that's either there. Obviously it's a 32-bit architecture, we all know that. Um, runs on a lot of embedded devices. All of the ARMv6 and ARMv7 are 32-bit. There's no 64-bit ARM right now, maybe ARMv8 when it comes out. So we have x86-64 support as well, obviously. Everyone wants 64-bit. Now, when we utilize 64-bit support, we have to make sure we include multi-lib. Because a lot of these tools are built specifically with 32-bit libraries. If we don't include 32-bit, if we don't include multi-lib, you will not get your 32-bit GCC to compile that one package and one out build correctly on 64-bit GCC. Um, so ARM, so we rely pretty heavily on the Arch Linux ARM developers to maintain and build Arch Linux ARM. And that allows us to, again, be an easier layer on top of our, <coughs> on top of their distribution. We work very close with those guys all the time to ensure that everything's working correctly. Um, if we have certain issues, we will patch it and submit up to them, or we will just put a patch in it and go on. Um, perfect example, the other day, we were trying to get a Prince processor working on ARM. And the developer that built Prince processor, he did not immediately make it available for ARM. So we had to make patches inside of it to allow it to install correctly on ARM. And then he made some changes that broke it and then we got rid of it on ARM, but that's not the point. So we, we make as many patches as we can to things to keep things working 
And then because we are a small team, if they eventually are too much of a hassle, we will put it aside. Put it in a staging, put it away for a while, maybe remove it from repos that are broken it until we can fix it at a later date. Now, if someone really requested and really wanted it fixed, we'd bust our butts to get it working correctly. <clears throat> um, obviously, again, with both of their standards. So, RMB7. So, RMB7 is our main bread and butter. There's a lot of devices now that are RMB7. And RMB7 means that they are a um, multi core device. I believe it's quad core is an RMB7 device. That's the, that's a standard. Now there's still 32 bit. There's no 64 bit ARM devices at, as of this time, as far as I know. Um, and obviously we support Odroid, not not the Pi. We have issues with the res, with the foundation. Uh, we try to look at the more um, at the more lesser known ARM V7 devices out there. I'm sure a lot of people haven't ever noticed if you haven't heard much about the Odroid C1. It's a very interesting device. We, uh, we started building with it, and uh, it's, it's got gig mix, it's gig of RAM, and it's a quad-core processor. It's able to handle dual alphas at, one time, at the same time, capturing it for over 48 hours without a glitch, while at the same time stressing the CPUs up to a load of 30 while still having 90 megs of RAM. I'd say that's probably pretty good on a device that only takes a max of two amps of power. So you can easily power it via, via like a 5,000 milliamp um, uh, LiPo battery. Probably power it for two or three days. I haven't tested any of that, of course, but theoretically, could be possible. I'll be louder, project more? Okay, sorry everyone. Just kind of talking the front row, you know. <laughs> so we talked about multi-core, again, standards. I'm already questions now. That, that's not good. I should make more. It's more to go on. Yeah, yeah. So I have a few devices here. Um, are you ready? Yeah. So... Shoot, click. So this obviously is a alpha 2.4 gigahertz omnidirectional 5 dBi antenna. Nothing fancy, just something fun to play with. Um, we have another one from Simple Wi-Fi, same kind of thing. We we really like them a lot. There, I bought few things from them. I don't have anything else up here from them, but it's a really nice device, actually. My RTL SDR, this is a software defined radio that can sniff uh, GSM, um, FM, all kinds of signals out of thin air. I believe the Arch Linux ARM guys are use, using it for um, pulling the radio signals from the airport and graphing it via a waterfall device. That's kind of cool, right? And obviously we have the Odroid C1. It's the giga, it's giga RAM, the only quad core processor. It's got four USB ports. So you can hook up probably, possibly four antennas to it, four, four Wi-Fi adapters to it. Attack four different networks at one time. It only does 500 milliamps on USB, so it may run into some issues. It's maybe not powerful enough, but we'll have to do some further testing. We obviously have more alphas for wireless uh, access or wireless access points and hotspots and uh, just back and injection. Um, all of these are fully supported inside of our kernel, um, as well as the mainline Arch Linux kernel by now, because it's on 4.05, I believe. Um, so we have this USB armory. Has anybody ever heard of this before? Anybody ever seen it? So, and we have all this stuff at the table, so we can't see, we can see more things when you come by. This is a dual core, 512 megs of RAM, uh, 
USB to stick that you can plug in and you can actually boot off this. This is running Arch Linux ARM. So I have this configured right now to be a fake mirror of our repository. So you could put this into a computer, boot off of it, and you could actually download all of our packages as they currently exist in our repo from this device right here completely offline. Um, we work with both of these guys. These are for Kaiser Greensboro's path. You can pick this up by Crowd Supply. If anyone's curious, they're about 140 bucks. I really recommend them. They're really, uh, really nice guys. <clears throat> so now we have a uh, Shikara from Exhibitor. It's a new device I've been playing with to uh, work on embedded systems. So it handles uh, UART, SIP, and um, JTAG, and one more protocol I forget. So recently I used this to, um, uh, I pulled the case off by Ubiquity AP and, you, and uh, basically you are into it and got serial and was able to root it and pull off the image and then uh, wipe it with open word because Ubiquity's AP stuff is so-so. Um, I'm sure everyone's seen the HackRF. Sorry. So the HackRF is a device for pulling RF signals. I believe it does GS, GSM and Wi-Fi as well. Um, it's pretty expensive, but it's also by the same guys that make the Uber too. I don't have that up here, but we do have one at the booth. Um. Cantina. Everyone's probably seen these before. This is a professional one from Simple Wi-Fi. I didn't buy it, so I'm not sure exactly what it costs, but it's pretty nice. Gives you a very wide range. It's a unidirectional. And does anybody have any questions I didn't answer? Or anything? Yes. Yeah, so, so the live CD outside is um, <clears throat> our full install, our full repo install. It's about 16 gigs fully installed. And that's about, if you count Arch Linux plus us, it's probably about 2,300 packages on that CD. That makes a 32-bit about 3.9 gigs. And 64-bit, including multi-lib, is about 4.3. Um, but it's a live CD running open box. You can, uh, you know, it's got Firefox, it's got Tor, it's got pretty much anything you can do. You can install off of it, you can do whatever you want to do with it, you can play with it. Um, we don't have any persistence or anything like that yet. We are working towards adding persistence. There's an issue because the, the squash FS that holds all the packages is at 32 gigs. And the way Arch Linux works is it actually wants to take the whole Squash FS and load it onto a USB stick or a hard drive or something of that nature. And then we actually have to label that device so that each time you would, you would want to have persistence, you'd have to actually have a specific label, device label on your system to be able to have persistence. So we haven't quite figured that out yet. That's also in line with using forensics mode. We've been working on the forensics option as well. You can copy whole entire squash FS to RAM. Problem is that it's quite large. You have to have 32 gigs of RAM just to be able to hold the image. That's a massive amount. Um, I, I forgot I missed a few things, so I apologize. I'll kind of ramble for a second. Um, so we do have a custom kernel. Our, our, our little live CD runs our custom kernel, which is 3.18.2. And it, sorry? It, I thought someone said something. It maintains um, all the Kali patches are built right into it, so all the Wi-Fi injection patches are baked right into the into the CD into the uh, kernel. So in doing that, we have to maintain actually maintain VirtualBox modules, um, a few other um, kernel modules for I think uh, R8169, the um, 
NIC driver. We support the same same kernel modules in ARM kernel that the Linux LTS package pulls into their, theirs. Um, and we make that the default kernel when you boot from our ISO. But as you said, since we're on like 4.05, most of the pack, most of the Wi-Fi cards are supported with full packet injection already in mainline. And if they're not, you're probably using something very obscure. Anything else? Yeah. Go. You in the back. We would love it if people would be able to commit and help out. I will say this, we've had issues where people have committed and they, we criticize what they do because they don't follow standards and then they drop off the face of the earth. So I would say don't do that. We, we, we hold, our, hold our distro to, our, to high standards and we, we will throw criticism back if something's not right. But we're trying to give creative and instructive criticism, not yelling at you for doing it wrong. Um, if you want to do that, you can do all that via our GitHub. You can fork it, pull it, and um, make any changes you want. If you find any fixes, you know, let us know. We have our bug server. We have bugs.archsalt.org. We have our wiki server, which has our wiki pages with different tools. Um, some of the things that we don't do, so like, like Metasploit and Kali, they automatically enable you to be able to connect, to connect via th to the Postgres database. We don't set any of that up for you. So it's basically just standard Metasploit. Now, you can either set that up, and we have instructions to do that on our wiki. And then you can connect Armitage to it, or uh, Teamsploit, whatever you want to do from there. Anything else? Anything else, anyone? Again? Well, you can easily find us in IRC. We're on irc.freno slash archsalt. Um, you can, can certainly put, if you have a specific common device that maybe don't support or you want to see supported, you can easily put, a, put it in our bug tracker. And all you got to do is register an account, submit the bug. We'll get back to you. We're usually pretty prompt. Uh, one thing that a lot of people say is that you know, most most security distributions are really not uh, are not supported very well. I mean, you find a bug in a package, it might take you know four months for it to get fixed. But I mean, I'm literally online every day, so if you find a bug, you find an issue, I will probably see to it and answer it within 20 minutes usually. That's a little excessive because I do actually have a job, so you know. <laughs> but I mean, I'm, when I'm trying to convey is that you know, we really care about this project. You know, you guys find any issues, you know, please let us know. Don't just throw your hands up in the air and say, oh, this, you know, this is stupid. You know, if you let us know, we, we can't make it better without you guys. Because we don't know. We can't fix we don't know is broken. You were tweeting me before I even finished downloading the ISO. So <laughs> I, I mean, I, that. yeah. I mean, I basically sat outside in my booth on Twitter and on our city all day long. It's been quiet, but I've been watching things just to see what's going on. Obviously, everyone's here, so I don't even want to be online, right? <laughs> How many pen testers do we have in the room? How many people are actually going to actually pen test? Have you tried Arch Assault? Have you attempted that yet? So I, I urge you to, especially, how many of you are using like a VPS or a limited hardware?
Yeah, we've been there for a long time. <laughs> been gone. Compared to what, Cali or, um, so <clears throat> we've done a little numbers and so Cali shows their actual tool list and that basically maintains every single tool they have except for the dependencies. And we blow them out of the water by about 600 packages. Now we have a lot of community-based tools. We'll pull in things that, you know, a simple Python script that does, you know, WordPress scan. We'll easily pull that in because we support the community as a whole. Now, it, as you said, it's always changing, so we always have to work very fast to make sure that we are supporting to make sure that it's up there. If you find any cool tools, let us know. We'll figure it out. Simple as that. So many of the tools were actually Sorry. installed by themselves. Um, I know that I've talked with some people who prefer to have like sort of a lighter, uh, lighter weight distribution to be able to pick and choose the tools that they want. You mean from the ISO perspective? Yeah. The ISO has all of them. Has all of them, right? Yes. Now we do that so that you can't say, oh, I tried to use ISO and I didn't have this tool. Gotcha. That way it's all there. We have different categories for everything, but we usually we put we categorize every tool based on the type of tool it is, you know, wireless, uh, steganography, cryptography, whatever. We try to make sure that all of our tools are in the correct groups. If we have any tools in the wrong groups, you know, let us know we'll fix fix things. We'll try to work on that. That's a lot of work because you got to actually rebuild all those packages. That being said, you can take a straight hard image and then add their repository to the bottom of your list and pull out what other tools you need and then it's a lot easier. But and when you do the installer too, at least the last one that I downloaded, that when you do the actual two disk install, it's just the core. I mean, there's nothing there. There's no GUI. There's no nothing. I mean, well, that's what keeps it lightweight. Yeah, we, that's basically the default of Sparks Linux is that it's basically just a, um, I don't know if everyone's ever used uh, Debian's boot, uh, Bootstrap, same kind of way. It just basically puts all the packages onto a true environment and you build everything out on that. So like when I build a server, I can literally build my, um, I can go from clean disk all the way to fully installed in about 10 minutes. Mainly because I already know exactly what I need. I already have everything configured. Drop it on there. I can reboot those, reboot in that disk, and there is the environment. So, any other questions? I'm not answering. And I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. I'm always forgetting a lot of things.